clip here. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. On July 7, 2016, a gunman cowardly murdered five police officers. Um, Lane Ahrens, Michael Crow, Brett Thompson, Patrick Zamaripa, and Mike Smith. Uh, rest their soul. Sorry if I crack a little bit. I'm kind of emotional here. The gunman wanted a, a wounded nine other officers and two citizens that night. First responders, both police and fire, rushed in to help the protesters which were taking cover from the gunfire. That was a protest from um, um, police and um, uh, it was a racial tension back then also. It's, there still is. And they were protesting that and the, our Dallas police uh, very humbly uh, respected that and they, they were serving their citizens and helped them. My name is Daniel, Daniel Diaz. Um, at the station, they call me Double D. That's my nickname. Um, I'm from uh, way, way out west. Um, Marty Robbins has a song about the town where I'm from. I'm from El Paso. Um, we have our own time zone. And yes, we are in Texas. <laughs> it's not Mexico, it's Texas. So, um, I'm going to tell you some of my past just so that you know about what led me to seek help and 7-7-16 did not cause my post-traumatic stress disorder. My child, it, it, it was all a package, I guess. So. Um, my childhood was sporty. Uh, it was, um, it was, uh, there was a lot of abuse. Um, mentally, physical neglect, um, and um, yeah, I was always told I was ugly, and I mean everything. And so I learned to, I had my, my own survival skills. I learned to read people. If you do this to your foot, I know you're going to leave. If you want, if, whatever you do, I'm always. It's just a habit. I just learned to read people because I don't know what you're going to do to me. It's uh, maybe hypervigilance, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I became a pro at it, uh, not just looking at the eyes, it's the whole body language. That was my, my survival skill since I was a kid. Um, so I um, graduated high school, and I decided to go to college. I um, only went for half a semester, maybe even half a semester. I didn't finish it because I didn't have enough money to pay for it. My parents made enough money to send one kiddo to college, but also made too much money to qualify for financial aid, and, um, but not enough to, for me to, to go to college. So I, I worked, and I, um, on my birthday, I decided to enlist in the military. I went to the Marine recruiting station and they scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I like, oh man, I don't think I'm gonna do this. So then I went next door to the Navy. They made me some good offers, good money. Um, there wasn't any commas in the paycheck though, but they didn't, they, it, was, it was good, you know, they made me a good offer to go to college. I went next door again also to the, to the Coast Guard. Great, I mean, they offered me great, great stuff, but not the money that the Navy was offering me. So I went back to the Navy and I enlisted. And I, um, I was a uh, servant on a destroyer, the bulldog of the sea, the, we hunt submarines. Um, we, I went to Desert Shield. We saw a lot of stuff. We destroyed a lot of buildings. We did a lot of damage to buildings, personnel. <laughs> we did a lot of damage. We did. Um, I, I got in a lot of trouble when I was in the Navy. Um, I guess I was trying to, I don't know, I don't know. I, I saw the captain quite a bit. Um, a lot of times he, they, they, they took care of me, but they were just putting a bandaid on the, on the cut. I wasn't getting fixed. Um, 
I still got my honorable discharge, but um, if you see these, uh, these sailors, um, when they wear their uniform, they have gold stripes. Mine will be red. That means I got in trouble. I got in trouble quite a bit. I even got demoted. But I still got my honorable discharge. Yeah. Uh, I was a wreck. I was, I was hell on wheels. But, um, which, I like to say that when somebody has some issues, it doesn't give you a pass to act like a jerk. It does not give you a pass. Um, don't blow a firecracker because it stresses me out. You need to, you need to, um, be um, to become. Um, I guess don't be, don't want don't cater don't be, be catered to. But you know you need to to. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, don't don't tell people don't do that because it stresses me out. Mm. You know, so uh, I like to say that. Entitled. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so um, I got out of the, of the navy. Um, Honorable discharge, thank God. <laughs> and uh, I went to college. I went to uh, NMSU, New Mexico State. University, the, the Aggies, not the Lobos, the Lobos are in Albuquerque. I, we don't, <laughs> um, I did, um, while well, I was in the, at, at school, I was working as a mechanic, uh, auto technician, 9-11 um, happened. I was really angry, I went back, I re-enlisted re um, with a CBs this time. I did two years, I was upset because I didn't get deployed. I was there waiting and waiting and never get deployed. But while I was waiting, I did apply for other agencies. Um, I applied for Houston Fire, Dallas Fire Department, El Paso Fire Department. Um, I was en route to go to New York. I did deviate and I, I did apply for New Mexico State Police and the state troopers here in Texas. Fire Department took a long time to, uh, to go through my application. Police. They were pretty fast. I passed everything. Um, I was in good shape. Came time to the uh, psych eval. I failed that. I was not hireable. <clears throat> state police, uh, um, state troopers, same, th same deal. I passed everything, great shape. Um, passed the written and everything. Psych eval, didn't pass it. Um, Dallas called me, fire department. Somehow I passed that. <laughs> I guess they'll hire anyone. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, um, it'll be 20 years, July 3rd, for me. Um, uh, yeah, thank, thank the Lord, I, I've, I've, uh, it'll be 20 years. I've, I've been through uh, some sporty events. Uh, you know, the, the traumas that we get through, um, like, um, I was assigned to Station 34. I, I wanted to be in the specialty stations. Um, I didn't want to be just a fireman. I wanted to be like a, the first one I found was Swift Water. And I almost drowned several times. My lungs crave air, uh, you know, rescuing people and stuff like that. I, um, it was during a lot of training. We did a lot of training. That's when I almost drowned quite a bit. But um, I, uh, I, liked, I liked the station, my, my officer, Hoyt Hubble, captain, he, he, uh, he molded me, he told me how, what is expected of me, and he was great. <clears throat> I did get in trouble again at that station for, uh, for fighting. Um, when it comes to fight or flight, it gets me in trouble. I don't care if you're bigger than me, I'm gonna fight. Uh, <laughs> that's just crazy. <laughs> um, I, my, one of my officers was picking on me and I didn't, I wasn't going to have that, and so my captain asked me, when this happens, Daniel, somebody's got to leave, and I figured that um, I was going to go to just some raggedy station, some, you know, just go somewhere else. Uh, he was the first person to call me a fireman. I felt so happy when somebody finally said something good about me, my captain. Said, uh, we, we were in a bad fire, and I was just waiting for instruction. After the fire, the captain said, 
why didn't you do X, Y, Z? I said, I was waiting for you to tell me. He said, you are a firefighter. Do what you need to do. I was like, whoa, that was the greatest thing for me ever. You know, being treated like a terrible to, he just called me a fireman. Wow, I, I, I was ecstatic. Um, got in trouble, he did me a solid and, he, and I went to a station where you call that station if things get really bad. We're basically 911 for 911. Uh, we're, we're, those are the cream of the crop. Got like, you, you send me where? Wow, that, you, you probably think I'm a pretty good guy. I don't, I don't, I don't, he, he had hopes for me. He sent me there. Um, I was embarrassed because of what I had done. I, I got, in, got in a fight with one of my superiors. Um, and um, he was, actually it was kind of funny. He was running around the table, I was chasing him. <laughs> and and I, I, I was, I had that look in my eyes, I guess. So, but um, anyways, I, I, the truck driver at that station, station 15 in Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff is a rough part of town. You, you, I was in Oak Cliff. I, I love Oak Cliff, you know? Oak Cliff is, uh, you know, that's where I did most of my time in, um, in the fire department. Um, truck driver took me under his wing. Um, I made him laugh just because I wanted to be accepted and he, he, he they, they loved me there. I, I think they did. <laughs> so, um, that's where I, when I was at, at, in, in Oak Cliff, downtown was our second up uh, district. Um, so um, I knew the area there pretty well. Um, now I'm at station 39. Uh, we, it's also a specialty station. We have Marine One, we patrol the lake. Um, but, but you know, during Memorial Day, all that stuff, people have fun, get drunk, smash, drown. We gotta recover them. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, it's a, it's a good station. Um, my, ca my captain, laid back, awesome dude. My driver, we have two drivers. On that truck has two drivers, one in the front and one in the back. It's one of those at Ben. Mm. That thing is awesome. I love driving that thing. It is, you're driving on the highway and people are tailgating you and all of a sudden I just turn it and, the, and the, the trailer just goes sideways like this and everybody just, what is going on? It's, <laughs> it's, it's awesome, I love doing that. I love it. Um, 06, I got married. Uh, we had six kiddos, uh, five here on earth, one passed. Um, it, it was terrible. He, he was born, we baptized him. He had zero chances of committing a sin, so he is a saint in heaven. Um, thank God. We did the ultimate thing for our kiddos. We sent one to heaven. We're still working on the rest. <laughs> Hopefully they, they, uh, they do well too. Um, it, was, it was really bad, um, our marriage, everything. Plus my, I was already messed up with things I've seen on, on fire department, military, my, my life back then. And then 7-7 seven, seven happened, that was the final straw. Um, the, um, some of the events that we saw I, I remember three really, I mean, I can still see it and everything. Um, this young girl, stoplight, um, waiting for the light to turn green. 18-wheeler um, overpass, loses control, flies off the interstate, and lands on that car. The, the driver, I still remember him, and I'll describe him a little bit, uh, black male on the, on the floor out of the rig, head split open, um, blood there, the thick kind of blood. He, well, he's a recovery, we, you know, and you get so, it's terrible that you get so callous to all these events that, okay, uh, he's dead, next. So they laid the girl in there, they were both recoveries. We start getting her out of there, um, her hair smells burnt, pull her out, her feet are on fire, and, um, we, you know, we get her out and everything, and we open the trunk, and it's her, it was her birthday. And <clears throat> I 
that 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 hit me hard, you know. Um, and um, we also that was just one of many. There was a little girl. Uh, Dad was drunk on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And Dad did a Dukes of Hazard through the railroad tracks. Hits nose first uh, on the car. Girl is subjected. Car falls on top of a five-year-old kiddo. Um, we show up. They give me this mangled rag doll. Tell me here. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? At that time, I'm thinking, I called it this. She's not a human being in my head. She's just, um, both her femurs were broken, like um, chicken bones when you break them. And I was unraveling her panties off of it, trying to take care of her. Uh, something hit me in the back of the ambulance. We were going license science to Parkland to Children's Hospital. She, she wasn't gonna make it. Um, I'm, a, I'm a faithful man, I, I tried to be. I um, had the courage to <clears throat> baptize a little girl just in case she wasn't. Um, was, I'm a Catholic, being a Catholic, the formula for baptism is a salt, water, and um, the Holy Trinity. So I had saline, water, and baptized her and took her in. My report to the, at the hospital was, I don't know if I should say it like this here, but <laughs> um, when I handed her over, they said, they asked what happened, and my report to them, I was angry. And I said, she is effed up here. Everybody kept quiet. They worked on her. They, I think she passed, that she had to have passed. Um, somebody came and talked to me, and I just, you get away from me. I gotta go. Next, next run, next run. And I was explaining to somebody, um, kind of like Rocky, you get hit, you get hit, you get hit, you get hit. Like, gosh, when does it stop? And then you finally fall. When you fall, you, that's when you get in trouble. You start like anger. Then you start getting up slowly and stuff, and you just you keep on getting hit again and again. Um, I recovered one on my own. Um, building collapsed, and they sent us to this mangled mess of a, it was terrible. I, we finally found him. I was digging him up with a stick. Um, and I found, we found him. I remember picking him up, his blue face. I held his, fa his face with my hand and there was blood coming out of his nose. Um, so these, those are just a couple of, a few events that I've, that I've witnessed and um, I never bothered to ask for help because I was not, I didn't want to seem weak. Um, are they gonna take my guns away? Am I gonna get fired? You know, um, suck it up. You're, a bad, you're, you're supposed to be a badass. <laughs> um, but that's really not what, it, what it's about, you, you know. Um, so these, that's, that's, those are some of the events that I've been through and it, it, it took its toll. Um, I did, we did, my wife and I did, we did split up. Uh, we, we had a divorce. Um, I was probably too much to handle. I would come in um, and I never left the badge home. I took the badge, I, mean, I never left the badge at, my, at the station. I came home thinking, why is there a toy on the floor, angry? If there's a fire in, in, my, in my head, if there's a fire, firemen come in here, they're gonna trip on that, on that toy and they're not gonna be able to rescue you. I was super paranoid about everything. Did you lock the doors? Somebody's gonna come in here and rape you. Uh, I thought the worst. I, I, sometimes I still do, but I, all these things that I witnessed since I was a child, military to fire department, it took its toll and I was, I was, I was a wreck. Everything angered me. I even, I came home one day and I did flip the couch because I think there was a towel on the floor and somebody could have tripped and split their head open or in my head, that's just how I thought. Um, 
and I, I, I kept on. I kept on doing what I, going like that, I wasn't getting, getting any better. Um, so the impact on these men, 7, 7, 16, I told you all that stuff just so that you kind of get a picture of where I'm coming from, what, how I got help and stuff like that. And also, just so you know, some of these guys, some of these men that uh, risk their lives every day, um, be it a burning house or they're running into towards bullets flying at them to save those people that they don't even know who they are. Who does that? Who, what drives a person to do that? To, I, I, think, I just think we were just wired differently or maybe we're the same as, maybe they also had traumatic childhood experiences and, and that's what they, they just drive on the adrenaline rush. I don't know. But who goes into a burning building? Who goes, bullets flying? Who goes to a nurse? Broken bones, they're gonna stay there and, and help while people are puking? You know, we're, we're just, I say that because if you choose to seek help, you might not like the therapist, that you, the first one that you find. It might take you 12 therapists to finally find the one that's for you. Um, basically, you got a drug dog, a Belgian Malinois, you got a poodle. You know, poodle's a regular dog. The Belgian Malinois is kind of like us. We're just wired differently. They got to stay active. They gotta, they, the owners have to be different. That's how us military, police, fire, nurses, that's how we're wired. You give us a cup of coffee, we'll probably fall asleep. A regular guy will probably stay up for hours. Um, so the impact on these, on these men that day that saw their, their men get killed, oh gosh, I, I, you know, it's, it, it drove me, the impact it had on me, not, not that, but it drove me to write suicide letters, um, suicidal ideation, suicide letters, and I even had a plan. I had a rope and I was gonna hang myself twice. Um, thank God I didn't. Um, the reason I was talking about my faith is because I am faithful. I do believe in God and um, I, um, people will say, like they were saying earlier about the church goers and stuff like that. Great people though, great, awesome. Well, you need more, more Jesus. Um, that's what you need. You need to turn to Jesus. And um, I said, well, when somebody gets to that point of killing themselves, that's, that is, it's not because you don't have the Lord in you. It's because that is, that is the only solution they have. They come to that point to where you, that's, that's, that's the only solution to them and them. It's not, well, oh, gosh, well, he needs to go to church. He does go to church. I mean, I, good, I know Latin, <laughs> church Latin, you know. You know I've, I've, I take communion, I, you know, when I can. And st but uh, it's, it, it's just things that I, that I just, I wanted to just, um, throw out there. Um, the impact on these responders, anger. Second guessing, sorrow, survivor's guilt. Survival's guilt, survivor's guilt will kill you inside. Um, why didn't I die? Why can't it have been me? And why do I go home to my kiddos and Mike Smith doesn't? Um, Mike Smith was one of the men that got killed. I picked him up, put him on the ambulance, and I took care of him. But um, why? If, if only I was in front of him, second guessing yourself, um, he would have, he would have um, been with his kiddos, with his wife. Anger, oh man, that, that, that'll destroy you. I mean, this, that's the impact on these men. Um, and it bruises, it, it bruising you and it just, it just, it leads to destruction. 
and it, it did me. Mm, I, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I know it did, it did me. Um, again, everything that I went through the, did not and does not give me a pass to act like a jerk to you, to you, to you, to anybody. It does not give me a pass to do that. Just because I have a condition or, or I had a, a rough life does not give me a pass to be a jerk. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. He's, he, uh, his son just died. He just, dig, he just dug a hole for his son. No, I'm sorry. His son, his son just died. He just dug a hole by himself to bury his son. So just go easy on him. No, it, it doesn't give me a right to be a, to be a jerk to you. Um, so, um, and then you self-medicate. Um, I'm, I'm only going to say I've never gotten tested at the station and pop hot um, for drugs, alcohol, to self-medicate back when I was uh, going through some hard times. These men, Dallas gives you um, one shot. Um, okay, um, then do it again. You're gonna get, you get your discipline, whatever. Uh, go get help. That's that's amazing for us. They still need help. They're not gonna, you know, they're out of sick time. They're they're um, they're self-medicating, and they get popped again, and they they have to get fired. You know, they where's uh, we're so behind in the mental health um, treatment for us, and that's just my feeling. Maybe I'm ignorant to, to maybe we are advancing. My best, one of my best friends, he's a, a Casey Ellsworth, he's, he's, a, he's a peer supporter. He's, he's awesome. He's the one who helped me get help. Um, um, after that, the shooting and stuff like that, he, he reached out to me. Amongst other chiefs reached out to me also. <laughs> I call him a couple of few <laughs> names that I shouldn't say here. Uh, yeah, one, one did say, I want to help you, but I don't know how to help you. I'm going to do something, but I just don't know how. Give me some time. He was sincere. He didn't give me the cliche, if there's anything you need, you, tell, you let me know. You need something, what, you, whatever you need, you let me know. I don't think a first responder is going to tell you what they need because we help. We don't ask for help. So, so for instance, uh, man, this guy's a you know, farming buddy of mine. You know, he needs his grass cut. I'll go cut it for him. I'm not going to ask him, what do you need? Because he's not going to tell me what he needs. He's not, he, we don't do that. Police, fire, nurses, we, we don't do that. Military, we don't ask for help. We, and if, even if you go and help us, you know, I'm, I'm mowing the lawn for you, that guy's still going to come out, even though he's got surgery or whatever, you know, <laughs> he's going to come out and help you. I'm like, no, no, man, because we help. I don't know why our brains are wired that way, but we, that's, that's what we do. Um, and then you get to the, the destructive behavior, uh, with family, you lose your family, jobs even, and then you, the suicidal ideation starts hitting you. Um, it can go in any way. It doesn't go in that particular order, but it, it, it leads to that. Um, during 7 7 16, the, the shooting downtown Dallas, they, they gave me a Medal of Valor. I, I didn't ask for it, I didn't want it. Uh, Chris Kyle, I love the guy. He's, he's a one of my mentors, he rest in peace. Uh, medals, we didn't do it for the medals. Medals don't tell the whole story. I'm proud of my service. That's, he's got a saying like that, and I, I love that. I, I, we, we don't like getting recognition. Yeah, recognition is great whenever, you know, hey, yeah, party, hey, great guy, and then, but then they leave, and everything's silent, and you go, you're back to where you were at. Um, there was a girl that fell down the well, baby Jessica, I think was her name, that the, the guy who rescued her uh, committed suicide. He was awarded all this stuff, you know, great, you know, 
publicity, all that stuff. And then when it was all gone, it was left back to whatever. So um, when after it all comes calms down, you know, you're back to the same place. Um, and so that's why it's a. Um, it took it took a lot for me to to uh, ask for help, so that's the that was the uh, the impact on them. Um, said I. So, back to the shooting. Uh, seven seven sixteen. A while back, I've been on the I, It was my turn to be on the ambulance, because on the ambulance we ride uh, half and half. We we work ten days out of the month, and out of those ten days, we can only ride the ambulance half five days less than five days because the ambulance is it's, it takes a toll it's 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 super busy it's very hard i mean you deal with people i got a headache i gotta go to the hospital hmm. three in the morning i think yeah. ma'am <laughs> sir <laughs> really <laughs> how long have you had this headache for <laughs> oh, about three weeks <laughs> it's it's two in the morning man. <laughs> really yeah, I got to, I said, well, I'm glad I went to Oak Cliff because in Oak Cliff, there's a lot of pride. And they tell you, you will, I mean, these old heads, you will be iron, your, your pencil will be iron, you will look sharp, haircuts, old school, respect, you will be respectful to the citizens. You're not going to belittle them. There are some medics that, that are like that, you know, in my opinion. But Oak Cliff taught me, hey, man, that, you know, be kind, be respectful. You don't belittle anyone, anyone. When I go to hospital, maybe you take them, maybe you don't take them, but be kind to them and tell them why you don't. You're not going to take them, you know, and and kill kill them with kindness, you know. So and and I did get a lot of hugs from a lot of people. Like, oh man, well, we, we you know <laughs> just just baby doll, how's, how's it going? And, you know, oh well, I, I haven't gone to the bathroom for two weeks. Like, maybe, honey, honey, you know, you, you just. <laughs> You know, so, but anyways, um, that's that's just the Oak Cliff mentality. I, I, I loved Oak Cliff. Um, I woke up at four in the morning to get ready. Um, wife and I had already been, you know, it was getting rocky already um, within our marriage because I was I, I was a mess. I was a mess, um, and uh, got up, take a quick wake me up shower, shaved, because I live in Grand Saline. And to drive to Dallas takes me about hour 15. <coughs> and it's courtesy to show up earlier so that if they get a run, you take it because it's 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. So if I show up there at 6 in the morning, they get a run, hey, man, I got it, you go home. Because a run takes about a 45 minutes, you know. So, um, so we get there early, we, we, we take it and stuff. So, kids, uh, my, kid, my kiddos, bye because. We usually, in my head, I'm going to work, I'm not coming back. That was always in my head. I'm going to work, I'm not coming back. I love you, kiddos, bye. You know, uh, kiss the wife, bye. And um, it got to a point where it was not no longer be careful. It was just, mm, well. Um, so I, I got to the station, uh, checked out the ambulance. No, uh, check. Make sure we had all the drugs. All the the life pack was uh, charged for the defibrillator. Uh, we had plenty of IV bags ready to go. And <clears throat> and it's crazy that I told my my partner Miguel Garcia. He also had to get some some help because he was going through a lot of stuff himself. Um, it's it's kind of ironic. I told I said, "Hey Miguel, they can't hurt us today, bro. They can't hurt us, man. It's only 24 hours." Oh boy, <laughs> that was that was. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. I've never spoken like this before. I apologize. And um, I um, we were checking out the ambulance. We get run after run after run, gunshot wounds, stabbings, you know vomiting, whatever, and he, we got runs. The call for um, that incident, we got it at, it was eight, I think it was eight, 8.58. 
Oh, it was almost nine o'clock. We got the call, and all it said, we were, we were coming back from, from Methodist, you know, we were flirting with the nurses and stuff. <laughs> and then we, we, <laughs> yeah. So, like, man, we, so we had had, they said that we had had 20 runs prior to the shooting, prior to 9 p.m. We still had till 7 in the morning to go, so we, we were, we were going to reach. We, yeah, we, we weren't even done. So, um, we, all the script, the, we got, I was driving, and then we got the run. Miguel said, hey, uh, Double D, we got a run downtown. There's a shooting. F, you know? <laughs> God, but I didn't know what it was. It was just a shooting. Uh, another shooting. You know, it's just another run, another one. But let me tell you, uh, if it's one of our own, uh, we're going to go boss the wall. We're, we're going to... If it's one of our own, if it's a cop, if it's a fireman, we're going to do everything and then some. We're not going to stop. We're going to go because that's the privilege we've earned. We're, it's a brotherhood. Police, fire, even though we police and fire, we're always fighting stuff and all. Um, but uh, if there's a cop involved and there's a fireman, we're going we're gonna to do everything and then some. And we're going to get you to the hospital. Whether you're still dead, we're going to get you there. We're going to do CP We're not going to stop. You know, other people, we, we, we have to look at certain criteria. If we stop or not. But um, <clears throat> we, we, it just says shooting. So we start driving. I know shortcuts. I, I mean, I've been in Oak Cliff forever. And uh, to get downtown, I took this. this it's a viaduct. It's a, it's a bridge that I took. And I said, hey, dude, what's the address? He said, it just says by by the Greyhound station, and I said, "Well, I guess we'll just smoke it in." So that term, smoking it in, uh, kind of like when there's a fire, you don't know how to get there. You're supposed to know your district. You know, you're supposed to know where every street is at, every shortcut. And smoking it in is like kind of like, okay, well, we'll just head towards that area, and then when you see the smoke, you just go there. <laughs> that's that's what smoking it in means. So it's man, well, I guess we'll just smoke it in. And sure enough, as soon as we, we clear the, we got to the top of the Zhang Bridge, more comments were coming in, multiple shots, fired, and, uh, and it said, police involved. Oh, at that time, I just floored it, and we start going, and I see all the lights, uh, flashing lights, and I start, I head that way. We had an intern in the back, young kiddo, baby face, so I'm the senior medic at the time, Miguel, I probably had three years on Miguel, so not, not, that many, not, not that much on him. But I still felt that I was to protect them when we found out what was going on. Um, we saw the lights. <clears throat> and uh, am I supposed to stop at two? You got 15 minutes, bro. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll be fast. Um, we saw the lights, and um, we went toward the lights. And every, all the cops have their big guns out, bulletproof vests, helmets, and like, what the heck is going on here? And the cops said, hey, stop. You're in the hot zone. You're in the hot zone. Like, what does that mean, dude? We're, we're, we're here for the cop. Where, where's he at? Well, if you go around the corner this way, just be careful they don't shoot at you. <laughs> you know, if you go around the corner, just, just be very careful. Uh, they're right there, and we're trying to get that way, but uh, we don't have any cover. They use the ambulance as cover. Like, are you kidding me? What the heck is going on here? So, you know, I, I, we stepped out, and then where, where are they? And they, they, then we went back in. At that time, we switched drivers. Miguel was driving, and I was on the passenger side, and I, I rolled up a window and said, Double D, this is, those aren't bulletproof uh, windows. I said, dude, Miguel, I got to do something. We're going to get shot. So, and I told the intern back, I said, I said, dude, get underneath the stretcher, do whatever you need to do, but they're, they're going to shoot. These, these MFers are, are using our ambulance as cover. So, <laughs> you know, so the, the, the cops are like with us, and, and we're, we're, we make that, that little turn. There's, then at that point, they, they've assumed that there was uh, multiple shooters because downtown there's echoes, there's echo, the Omni. The, well, I thought they were coming from the Omni. Uh, El Centro was on this side. And he was, he was shooting from El Centro and just echo everywhere. And I heard on transmission, radio transmission, uh, the 
the he's wearing ballistic vest and muscle, and I just my head started playing games with me. On the rearview mirror, I saw I saw him, which wasn't him, coming towards us with a gun. I said, "We're we're we're, we're going to die. We're going to die. This is it, dude." Um, we saw a police element come up. Um, Mike Smith he got out of got out of his unit. He got shot. I we saw we ran towards him. Whether my mind was playing games with me again or not, I don't know. But they were, they were shooting. They shot him. They were shooting. We were going to the to get him. And other cops were closer. They grabbed him, picked him up, and they brought him to us. Another ambulance pulled up. They threw him on that ambulance because it was closer than ours. Young medics. Uh, it was young. Some young medics. Um, Mike Smith was an older almost about to retire um, sergeant. Uh, I realized that he wasn't gonna, they did their job, great medics. They were just young and I don't think, I thought to myself, he's not gonna listen to them. I said, get out. I, they got out, I started treating him. His entrance wound was, was uh, bigger than the, than the exit wound. They came from above, but how does it come here and exit this way? Mm -hmm. um, so it, the bullet disintegrated in his body mm -hmm. and some of it went up this way. Um, which made me feel better when I found that out because I thought I, I, thought I had failed. So, and he didn't know. I talked to him. He was, he said, uh, hey, and, hey, what's your name? You know, trying to make him feel better. I straddled him and I'm treating him, taking clothes off, gun belt. I'm like, I'm supposed to get a gun belt to somebody, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to do that yet. You know, um, rookie a cop girl steps in and she's holding his hand. I'm like, I'm going to allow this because I, right now this is, this is mayhem, this is chaos. I start IV on him. Um, he's telling me he can't breathe. I'm like, hey, hey, uh, man. I said, man, tell, tell. Tell my wife to love her. Tell my wife to love her. Tell my wife to love her. I said, dude, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna, we're, we're gonna get out. Of, we're gonna get out. Of, we're gonna take a power plane and we're gonna. You're gonna be okay. Uh, what's your name? And he starts telling me about it. how he went to church here and there. And I said, now you know what? I go to the same church and, and uh, I've never seen you there. Um, he, uh, he, they always. I've always, old school was always treat the patient, don't treat the monitor. The monitor looked bad. He was maintaining himself. He was. He looked. Okay. He looked okay. My partner said that bullet wound was. He said he's like he's not going to be okay. I said man, you're going to be fine. I started him and everything. I started treating him. I telling me that he couldn't breathe. I grabbed the needle. Um, there was another medic behind with me also, and I said, give me a needle. And he was like, please don't do it. I said, give me a, give me a needle. So I, so I grabbed him, because that was my ambulance. I didn't know where they kept their stuff. We swapped. I mean, it was total, total. I told the intern to drive the ambulance, which I got in trouble for doing that. Anyways, yeah, drive the ambulance. And we, we're in survival mode at this time. I, you know, uh, we're driving to Parkland, and I, I dart him. And there's supposed to be air coming out. There's no air coming out. Like, did I do it wrong? Well, I've done this before. I've done this before. Um, it, it ate me up alive. We and he and I was going to do some more procedures, some more stuff. And I'm talking to him, and he said, and would really. Uh, he, I, what really got to me was I was about to do something else, and he said, Daniel, stop. He said. Take my boots off. Uh, take my boots off, please. The way he said it, it 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 was horrible. It, the way he said it, just I dropped everything and I looked at his boots, and that son of a gun did not have. It wasn't regular. No, it was, he was, he was, they were tied in multiple knots. <laughs> like, oh, 
So I grabbed my knife and I had to cut the laces and I took his shoes off and he said, the last thing he told me was, Daniel, that feels so good. And um, we had pulled into Parkland. They opened the doors, and then um, there was a fireman buddy of mine working overtime at Bytel, our medical control, and uh, he was working. I said, what do you got, Double D? He said, man, he can't breathe. Uh, left side, um, gunshot wound, he can't breathe. Um, okay, we got it. So they, they wheeled him off. We go back, um, give a quick report. You know, this is what we found, Mike Smith downtown shooting, okay, go. So my partner gets, let's go, let's go back. We go back, we treat more police officers. Um, they, they said, we're done with this guy, we're gonna blow him up. They use C4 with a robot and they, they, they got him. I, uh, just like us, we're, we're I don't know what, what's, what drives us to do what we do. Um, that man, I, 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 earlier, I'm believing demonic possession. I don't know. I don't know what was wrong with him. Why would you do something like that? Why would you do that? Um, these men, they, we were not allowed to speak of the event for over a year for legal reasons. Um, I think it did a lot of harm to a lot of us. That, again, that was not what triggered my PTSD, that was just the last, I couldn't take anymore. Um, I was already messed up at the time, but that was, that was all I could take. I said, I'm, I'm done. I mean, um, um, I, I, I went, I started, um, I didn't care for authority. Uh, chiefs would come at me and um, I would tell them how I felt. I would use bad language towards them Thank God they didn't discipline me. They didn't fire me. They, you know, they, they finally found out what had happened. And they said, oh my God, this is, a week after the shooting, um, they, found, they found out that me and Miguel were downtown. Um, and they said, oh my gosh, we gotta do something. They finally figured it out. They, got some type of help or whatever um, they but that that's just the the communication we had I mean next run next run um, we were there that night from nine I think till four in the morning we were there staged just right there staged and uh, we didn't get any relief nobody knew we were down there um, other uh, they didn't know what we had gone through. There, there was other, and then uh, chiefs were yelling at us, what are you doing in that zone there? And I said, well, you obviously don't know where your men are at. You know, um, they, they told us, well, you gotta go to Lamar and over here by staging and blah, blah, blah and this and that. I said, and I said some, a couple of F-bombs and, and then, uh, but it was, I remember it was, I was telling somebody that, uh, it's nine at night, but the sun, I still remember it was bright daylight in my head. It was so weird that I could see there was light. Uh, I guess the adrenaline rush, the, uh, the flight, or f flight or fight mode was kicked in, you know, and um, I, uh, that, was, that, was a, that was a horrible survival mode night. Um, I got in trouble. Uh, for doing certain things that was against protocol, but at the time it was survival mode. It wasn't, we're gonna have to, we have to, okay, well, protocol says to do this. Um, the intern is not allowed to drive. Well, I'm sorry, but this is what's gonna happen. Uh, I made the choice and um, they decided to award me and Miguel some, some medal. It's, um, I, you know, it, it took it, but uh, at the same time, it, it I, I got transferred out of that station to another station uh, just to you know, give me some rest. Um, it was in North Dallas, it's kind of ritzy up there. It's not my, cu it's not my cup of tea. 
I'm like, no, man, I'm, I'm, all, cl I'm all cliff, man. I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this, man. I mean, great, great fireman, too. But it's just, it, I'm, I, I like, you know, that's, that's where I cut my teeth in Oak Cliff. Uh, so I, um, the, um, when I was at that other station, a um, great captain of mine was there, too. And he, um, uh, he took me under his wing also. He knew what I was going through. Um, the chaplain would come a lot over there because uh, I would say certain things. And she'd come over there. Uh, she's a, uh, that lady's a saint. <laughs> she's, she's amazing. Um, but um, I, nobody knew about that. I had a couple of suicide letters at that station. And I was going to hang myself um, at, uh, out there. Um, when I was about to do it, I pictured my captain um, crying over me. And uh, isn't that weird that I, I thought about my captain and my kiddos? Uh, it, it's when, when somebody starts thinking of suicide, that's, it's not because they need church or they need X, Y, Z. That's, that's, that is where they, that's the end. That's, that's what they've hit. And, um, that's that's the solution to them, and that's in, in their head. Um, I finally got my got um, the courage to ask for help. Um, they didn't take my guns away. I have a license to carry, so please don't think that if I go ask for help, they're gonna take my guns away. Mm. I have my guns at my house. Uh, I uh, I didn't lose my job. I still have my job. I was diagnosed with a PTSD, and um, nobody called me up. You know, nobody told me to suck it up. They all respected me. Um, it's funny because uh, they—that's not my first medal I get. <laughs> I've gotten. Um, I, uh, but uh, there's there is a lot of people that do like me and respect me for, and I. If there's anybody that I can help just by saying anything, whatever, I, I mean, because I've, I've been there, I know how it is. Um, I went through 12 therapists, including doctors, uh, psychologists, and it took me a while to find, finally find the one that, I, that, I, that worked for me. So if you decide to, because it's up to you, you can't, somebody can't just make you go because you're just wasting people's time. Um, but uh, if you go and you don't like the therapist that you, that you found, go to another one. Give it some time and go to another one. You're gonna find the one that's, that's for you. Again, uh, us police, firemen, military, nurses, we're, we, you know, and you know that, we are wired way different. That's not to say that we're badasses better than the regular population. We're, we're, no, we're not saying that. We're just wired in a different way. You know, kind of like the comparison with the dog and the, the, the Malinois and the, and the poodle, you know, sort of. Uh, this, this dog needs this type of owner. This dog, mostly anybody can have it. But this one takes a special, <laughs> strong hand. So that's kind of the same way with a therapist um, and, um, and a patient that's military, police, fire, nurse, doctor. Um, I hope I did a good job in telling my story, and uh, maybe it, um, it'll encourage some people to... When you're struggling to seek for help, um, you can always call anybody. Um, I, I don't want to say you can call me anytime you want to, because I probably won't, I don't know what, I don't know what I would say, but I mean, I would be happy to listen. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you everything's going to be okay. If there's anything you need, let me know. I'm not going to tell you that. Um, I like to help. So this is kind of my way of helping people by talking. I do not do public speaking because it's my biggest fear. I'll r run into a burning building, but this talking to people. <laughs> uh -uh. So thank you for your time, guys.